so I've always been interested in sort of business and stuff like this. My first, here, I'll, here. I'll give you my first uh, business venture I ever had. Okay. I don't know if I've shared this one before. When I was in elementary school, right? This was my first business venture if I, that I remember. It might be other ones, a couple other ones before that, nah, just random, but this was a big one, right? When I was in elementary school in my city, the, and still this thing goes on, there's an amusement park, very little amusement, well, relative to Disneyland and stuff, and small, but in Vancouver, there's, there's an amusement park. And every year for two weeks, there is Pacific National Exhibition comes in. To this amusement park so they bring in lots of concerts and they bring in lots of animals and they got the derby races going with cars crashing into each other those are super cool and stuff right so it's sort of like a fair thing that comes into this amusement park for two weeks out of the year and this was in the 1980s when i was in elementary school and I haven't been for a long time, so I don't know if they have this now or not anymore. But during that time, there were no casinos in our city. If you wanted to go, if you wanted to gamble, you had to go fly out to Nevada, go to the United, or drive to Nevada. You had to go to Nevada from Canada to gamble, right? And we did. So in the 1980s, when this fair used to come, they brought the animals, they brought the circus acts, some animal acts, uh, derby, destruct derby and stuff like this, uh, concerts, and they also brought games of chance, okay? So, you know, carnival games of chance. So, you know, they had one thing, you know, they had the wheel with the arrow pointing and they spin the wheel. It's like these little sections, you put your money on the, the section, you put a dollar on it and the wheel spin. The, the thing spins, the pointer spins. And if one pointer stops where you had your money, you get double your money. If two pointers stop, you get triple your money. If three pointers stop, you get like five times your money. If four pointers stop, you know, they give you money. They had other games of chance as well. That was one of them they had. They had Lucky Seven, where they had a spin thing, and they spin it, you put above seven, below seven. They had these things, right? One of the things they had, they had <laughs> everything set up, right? where people stood here and then in the middle it was like a basically a, a square right so there's people standing here people standing here people standing here people standing here and it's maybe 10 meters by 10 meters right or let's say eight meters by eight meters or something like this right and inside this central area right now remember people are standing on the outside Inside the central area, they had like bowls and cups and plates and stuff set up, and each one had a number. So if you had pocket change, you would take your pocket change and throw your change into the center, and wherever your change landed, you would go tell the the person that was, there was usually two people that were, or two or three people, if they were busy, they had people on either side, like four corners, they had people watching this thing, right? So if you're, let's say you flipped a quarter or 10 cents and it landed in a bowl that's it three times. So you would get your money back plus three times that, right? So for your quarter, they would give you back, I can't remember, it was 75 cents or a dollar, right? So it was like gambling because you were throwing change away. It was chunk change, right? And it was crazy because anybody could do it. Even kids were doing this, right? It was like gambling for kids, right? And grown-ups were doing it and stuff. And then they would come and give you change. So I did this a few times. I was like, hey, this is great. Fun, right? Doing it with my grandma. It's the grandma you see me play backgammon with, right? I used to go to the fair with her. And we, during that, when I was that young, I would play backgammon with her too, right? Hello. Great to see you back streaming. Camille Baronon, Bar Baroness, how are you doing? Glad to be streaming, right? So they had this game. It was fun. So we went to this thing, and then, you know, I came home, and I sort of went, that's brilliant. I want to do, right? So the weekend came, okay? Friday, 
when I came home from school, right? I went to our garage and I told my mom and dad, don't park the car here. I'm setting something up to play games with the neighborhood kids, right? <laughs> and they said, okay. And my dad was in construction, so there was, we had wood and stuff. So I drew, I brought a chalk. I believe I brought a chalk. And I drew a line of chalk. And I think I put two by fours or two by eights on the ground. So, you know, there was a ledge, right? And then I took a, another two by four, two by eight. Since you're talking about gambling, are you those win at blackjack strategists? Uh, I've done, yes, counting cards. Uh, you can make it work, but they changed the game. In the 80s, in Las Vegas, you could stay, still play uh, blackjack with two decks, blackjack, right? Four decks in the late 80s, early 90s. And then they brought in the six decks and the promo shuffles and card counting and sort of out, right? So I set up, draw a chalk, put up two by four, two by eight on the ground. And then I put up, a, I think two by 12 or something like this that we had that was standing up and behind this thing I put I went into the kitchen and brought bowls and pots and cups and stuff and I put numbers on each one right? and I went and told the neighborhood the kids that I have a game bring your change here's what it is Boom. right a couple of people came on Friday two or three or four people came on Friday on Saturday I had the place running for like four hours. The kids were coming, throwing their change. I was collecting change, right? They were running out of change, going home and grabbing change and bringing it back and playing this game, right? Sunday came, okay? I ran it again, okay? And then we closed it because our family needed to go somewhere and stuff like this. I came home Sunday and my mom called me and said, Chicho, what are you doing in the garage, right? They went, I went, well, I've set this up. I showed her, I set this up, set this up, set this up. <laughs> There's this. She goes, you did what? I said, I did this. He goes, I'm having calls from our neighbors saying that their kids have been stealing the change jars at home and they're empty i go oh that's cool here's the jars of change that i have like seriously i don't know how many jars of change like i made a ton of money for some kid in, a, in elementary school i made a lot of money right my mom's like what oh my god we're new to this neighborhood and we had just come recently from iran right for a couple of years they're like we're new to the neighborhood you're doing this that must thing you have to give all that money back to people. I go, wow, I don't even know who threw what. Like, well, you can't give money back to people. And she goes, you have to give money back to people. You have to give it back. So I said, okay. So I took a jar, like, took my chain, put it on the side. And I opened up shop again, and kids showed up. And I said, listen, you know, you guys have been taking money from your parents without telling them stuff. I have to give your money back. So I said, how much did you lose? And they said, oh, this much. And I said, I don't know that much. So I started started distributing a little bit of money. I was like, a, just imagine, this was my first lesson of being a, a understanding what the banking system is like or being one of the powers that be, right? I had multiple jars of change and people were coming to me saying, oh, I did this much. I don't, I don't know you did that much. I'm, I think you gave this much. So out of like three jars, I returned like one jar, one and a half jars, and I kept two, two and a half jars because I had no idea who spent what, right? That's something about, about me, right? Economics. Uh, so that was a great lesson. That was a great lesson. I, it was incredible, right? So when people tell me what, what you should do as a personal finance, start experimenting in our current economic system. If you see something, if you think you're interested in doing that thing, try it out. Don't go get a loan on the house and mortgage out your family to do this thing because you don't know this thing. But play around with it. You learn things, 